Okay, thank you for joining North Kansas City Hospitals Nutrition for Cancer Prevention and Survivorship meeting. Um, we will go ahead and get started. So today we have Lindsay Moore, who is a registered dietitian here at North Kansas City Hospital, who's going to be going over everything that she has learned about this topic. So with that, I'll hand it over to Lindsay. Hey, thank you. Hello, my name is Lindsay and I am a dietitian at North Kansas City Hospital. And today we're gonna to be talking about nutrition for cancer prevention and survivorship. Here are the two objectives we're gonna be talking about today. We are going to discuss the nutrition recommendations to reduce the risk of cancer development and cancer recurrence. And we are also going to examine the benefits of plant-based eating in relation to reducing the risk of cancer development and cancer recurrence. We are really gonna be focusing most on plant-based eating today. And to really start with that, plant-based eating is a non-restrictive dietary approach that provides significant health benefits compared to the typical Western American diet. Plant-based eating really reduces the risk of a lot of chronic diseases, such as heart disease, type 2 diabetes, hypertension, certain types of cancer, obesity, and many more. But more specifically, what is plant-based eating? Plant-based eating focuses on eating more fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, legumes, nuts, and seeds. It has a lot of anti-inflammatory properties. It's very antioxidant-rich. So really helps to reduce, kill, fight that inflammation. It also ensures adequate energy and promotes well-balanced eating with the goal of eating more plants. I did wanna mention, it is noted that all cancer survivors are advised to follow the cancer prevention recommendations after that acute stage of treatment. So everything we're talking about in terms of cancer prevention also applies throughout survivorship and preventing cancer recurrence. Um, so yeah, today's focus is for nutrition prevention and preventing cancer recurrence. The nutrition changes during cancer treatment. So if you're actively going through cancer treatment, nutrition does often change. So if you have questions while you're actively going through treatment, talk to your oncology dietitian. Here are some basic nutrition tips that really optimize energy, promote well-balanced eating to help you incorporate um, throughout the things we'll talk about today. So each day trying to do about three small meals, one to three snacks spaced evenly apart. Try not to skip meals or snacks and have a snack, of meal, have a snack if meals are spaced more than four to five hours apart. Eat a diet high in all types of plant foods. So including your fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, legumes, nuts and seeds in most meals. And monitor your portion sizes to avoid overeating. And the MyPlate method is a great tool to um, do that with. And we'll talk more about that. So to start off with the three main food groups in the diet or the macronutrients, macronutrients are nutrients and food that provide us with calories or energy. These are your carbohydrates, your fats, and your proteins. More specifically, your proteins, any kind of meat, eggs, fish, cheese, peanut butter, protein's really important for the body because it's required for tissue repair, building your lean muscle mass, immune system function, increasing satiety, so increasing your fullness between meals and snacks, and many more. Your fats are your oils, butter, margarine, salad dressings, nuts, seeds. Fats are needed um, to absorb several vitamins, and this is also your slow-burning source of energy in the body. And then you have carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are like your bread, your rice, your pasta, your fruits, milk, yogurt, your peas, corn, potatoes, and a lot of your sweet and snack foods. The primary function of carbohydrates is to provide energy for the body, especially our brain and nervous system. We really do need all three of these macronutrients as a part of all balanced eating. Now we're really gonna dive into each of these macronutrients and talk about what foods we wanna choose and what foods we wanna limit in terms of cancer prevention and cancer recurrence. With protein, we wanna limit the intake of processed meats 
if consume any. So you don't necessarily, you do not have to eat processed meats if you don't want to, but limit that intake. So your deli meat, bacon, bologna, sausage, hot dogs, turkey sausage, turkey bacon. And we want to limit the intake of red meat. Red meat is your beef, your pork, your lamb. And we want to limit consumption to no more than three portions weekly, which would be four to six ounces per serving or 12 to 18 ounces a week or 350 to 500 grams weekly. And when you're choosing what red meat to eat, try to do more of your lean beef. So 90% lean beef or higher, doing those round and loin cuts and trimming the visible fat. The cancer risk comes from the sodium nitrite. So that cancer risk that you get in a lot of those red meats and processed meats comes from that sodium nitrite. This is not just regular nitrites and nitrates, which that often gets confused um, because they sound really similar. So it comes from the sodium nitrite and this cancer causing compound is either converted in the body during digestion or it's formed during the processing of meat. And the sodium nitrite causes increased inflammation, increased production of cancer cells and decreased rate of cancer cell death, all of which we don't want. Now more specifically, what protein to eat more on a day-to-day basis? Really focusing more on your lean protein. So skinless chicken, turkey, fish, seafood, eggs. But don't forget about those plant-based sources of protein. So beans, lentils, your soy products like tofu, edamame, tempeh, nuts, seeds, nut butters. So peanut butter, almond butter, chia seeds, flax seeds, hemp seeds, quinoa. Um, So just trying to get enough protein in, but also choosing those lean cooking methods like your bake broil, grill, steam, poach, just trying to limit some of that frying. Now we're gonna talk about fats. Not all of your fats are created equal. The types of fat you eat will affect your blood cholesterol. We wanna limit your saturated and trans fats and choose more of your unsaturated fats. We wanna limit your saturated and trans fats because they increase your risk of heart disease um, and cancer risk. These are generally sold at room temperature. This is butter, margarine, your whole fat dairy, and those high fat meats. And then your unsaturated fats help reduce the risk of heart disease and cancer risk. These are generally liquid at room temperature, oils, nuts, seeds, avocados fall into this group. Um, And again, it increases that fullness and helps absorb several vitamins that we need. Now we're gonna talk about carbohydrates. When you're choosing what carbohydrates to eat, try to choose more of your complex carbohydrates. These are like your whole grains, your beans, legumes, your fruits, and your starchy vegetables. Those are all your complex carbs. These contain a lot more vitamins, minerals, fiber, and phytochemicals, specifically your iron and B vitamins. And phytochemicals, we'll talk more about those, but those are beneficial compounds that are found only in plant foods. We want to limit your simple carbohydrates. This is like your soda, candy, fruit juice, syrup, white breads, white pastas, just because they contain little nutrients and they're highly processed. But the key with carbohydrates is carbohydrate moderation. We want to spread your carbohydrates consistently throughout the day in small portions at each meal. So we need these carbs for that energy. Plus is where we get a lot of those vitamins, minerals, fiber, phytochemicals. In terms of vegetables, we want to eat a lot of vegetables for a variety of reasons. Very anti-inflammatory to help fight inflammation. Contains vitamins, minerals, fiber, and those phytochemicals we'll talk about. The key is we want to focus on your non-starchy vegetables. The three starchy vegetables are the peas, corn, potatoes, which are great sources of complex carbs. Um, So your non-starch is going to be pretty much anything besides those three. And some of those, um, just to name a few, are lettuce, tomatoes, cucumbers, broccoli, spinach, carrots, bell peppers, zucchini, mushrooms, and many more. Your non-starchy vegetables are low in carbohydrates, high in fiber, and you can do fresh, frozen, canned vegetables. All are fantastic for you. In terms of canned vegetables, wanting to do low sodium or trying to get the no salt added, 
or just rinse them up with that water. And try to include your non-starchy vegetables daily in your meals. Now, those phytochemicals we've mentioned, phytochemicals are disease-fighting nutrients that are only found in plants. So some of the benefits of those phytochemicals in terms of cancer prevention and recurrence is that it stimulates your immune system. It blocks substances we eat, we breathe, we drink from becoming carcinogens. And carcinogens are any cancer-causing agent. It slows the growth of cancer cells, it promotes cancer cell death, reduces inflammation, and can regulate your hormones. So really trying to focus on eating a lot of more of those plant-based foods. The MyPlate method, this is a really great tool you can use to help you monitor your portion sizes and tell you what foods to even have on your plate with meals. And this is a really great tool to really help you incorporate everything we've talked about so far. So trying to designate about one fourth of your plate to be those grain and starch foods at meals. So this is like your bread, your rice, your pasta, and the peas, corn, potatoes would go here. One fourth of your plate would be protein. One fourth of your plate would be your non-starchy veggies. And then one fourth of your plate fruit. And then a serving of low fat dairy, if you can. I wanted to talk about the vegan diet because the vegan diet often gets tied in and talked about a lot with plant-based eating. The vegan diet avoids all animal-based products in diet and lifestyle, and it does not necessarily focus on whole foods. And it may include high amounts of processed meat or meat substitutions. And the choice is more likely motivated by animal advocacy. So the vegan diet isn't necessarily healthy because it can be very processed. Um, pictured below are Oreos, soda, chips, all of which are vegan, but pretty highly processed. So I just wanted to make note that the vegan diet can be processed um, and that wouldn't be beneficial in terms of cancer prevention and recurrence. But if you're doing more of that plant-based eating with the vegan diet, it can be beneficial. But you do not have to be vegan to get these benefits. So really just focus on plant-based eating. So focusing on those whole foods, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, legumes, nuts, and seeds. And plant-based eating may or may not be 100% plant-based. So if you want to eat animal products, you can, but you do not have to. It minimizes refined foods, such as refined flour and sugar. It's high in that fiber, phytochemicals, vitamins, minerals. And the choice of plant-based eating is likely motivated by health, environment, or animal advocacy. Fiber. I mentioned fiber quite a bit, so I wanted to dive in a little bit deeper on this one. Your fiber does a lot for your body. It contributes to your digestive health, keeps your bowel movements regular, increases your fullness between meals, regulates blood sugars, but it also lowers your LDL cholesterol which is your bad cholesterol that causes a lot of plaque uh, buildup in those arteries. So with that being said, we want to select high fiber foods frequently, which you get from a lot of those plant-based foods, those whole grains, beans, legumes, fruits, and vegetables. And it is recommended in terms of cancer prevention to strive for a goal of 30 grams of fiber a day or is tolerated. And that's actually quite a bit of fiber. Um, the key with eating more fiber is to increase your fiber slowly over time, drink plenty of water, and get some sort of activity or movement in. Because if you increase your fiber really quickly all at once, you're going to have a lot of bloating and constipation. So we don't want that. So gradually over time, plenty of water and movement. That is a lot of fiber though. So if you do have some trouble getting that in, do consider a Metamucil supplement, but talk to your doctor or dietitian first. Hydration is key. So hydration does a lot for the body. Um, specifically, it increases your energy, increases your fullness, and helps relieve constipation. Um, when it comes to water and being hydrated, you can do plain water. You can do carbonated waters, flavored waters. You just don't want them to contain added sugar. If you're not a big water person, 
try infusing your water with fruits, lemon wedges, cucumbers, um, just to give a little bit of flavor. If you do kind of want um, something to switch it up with, try unsweetened tea or coffee without cream or sugar. This would not count as your water, um, but there are polyphenols that are found in tea and coffee that show cancer fighting potential. And in tea, specifically it's your black tea, oolong, green, and white tea. And the goal of water and being hydrated, the goal is 64 ounces or eight cups a day. Feel free to drink more than this though, if you'd like. Other considerations with hydration, we just want to limit the sugar sweetened beverages. And pictured below are some examples of that. So those soft drinks, like your sodas, fruit juice, sports drinks, energy drinks, just have a lot of the added sugar and those liquid calories we don't necessarily need. Alcohol, uh, for cancer prevention, it is best to not drink alcohol. And any reduction in alcohol will lower your cancer risk. But if you do want to enjoy um, alcohol, just limit alcohol consumption and be mindful of your moderation. The recommendation is one glass for women a day and two glasses for men. And this picture um, under there gives you an idea of a serving. So one and a half ounces of liquor, five ounces of wine, and 12 ounces of beer would be considered um, a glass. Physical activity. Being active can lower your cancer risk, promote a healthy weight, and lessen your risk for chronic diseases. The goal is about 150 minutes a week or 30 minutes most days, which would be about five days a week. Anytime you're moving your body, that counts as exercise. So just wanna encourage you guys to find something you enjoy activity-wise. And some ideas to help you increase your physical activity are yoga walking, stretching, water aerobics, swimming, online workout videos, you park farther away from the grocery store, taking the stairs versus the elevator, using stretchy bands, or even chair exercises. Supplements, this is um, really popular in the media uh, in terms of cancer prevention, survivorship, but just general healthy um, nutrition. So, it is not recommended to use supplements for cancer prevention. Although supplements are popular for cancer prevention, it is best to meet your nutritional needs through a well-balanced diet. And a lot of research has shown that supplements do not offer the same benefit as eating the whole food. And then what about deficiencies, specifically nutrition deficiencies? So it comes into question of, well, if I'm doing a lot of plant-based eating and I'm restricting certain things, am I going to be deficient in anything? And what we have found is that most Americans on that Western American diet do not actually get enough vitamin A, vitamin E, vitamin C, magnesium, potassium, and fiber. And that plant-based diets are actually high in all those things. So plant-based diets are high in vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, magnesium, potassium, and fiber. And there is no additional supplementation that is needed with plant-based diets, but it is recommended to take a vitamin B12 if you are vegan. Most important thing to know with deficiencies is to visit your doctor yearly. So go to your primary care physician once a year, get your labs, get your blood work done, because that's the best indicator of health and to know where your vitamin and mineral um, lab values are. And if you are deficient, then they will uh, recommend the appropriate supplement, dosage, and frequency. Breastfeeding. There's been a lot of research on breastfeeding for cancer prevention and survivorship. And for mothers, if you can, we recommend breastfeeding your baby because breastfeeding is both good for the mother and the baby in terms of cancer prevention and survivorship, preventing that cancer recurrence. It is recommended infants are exclusively breastfed for six months and then up to two years of age with the addition or alongside of appropriate complementary foods. 
soy and breast cancer. This is another hot topic, um, a surrounded cancer, specifically breast cancer. And we have found that breast cancer survivors can safely eat soy containing foods and that soy foods do not contain estrogen and they do not increase breast cancer risk. So recommended choosing more of your whole soy foods because these are still great sources of plant-based proteins. So tofu, tempeh, soy milk, and edamame are safe to eat, but soy pills and soy powders should be avoided. So we've really talked about a lot of good stuff today. So here's a little summary to recap some of the main key points. And we have three macronutrients or three main food groups in our diet, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. So incorporating each of these um, into your diet is a well-balanced diet, trying to aim for three meals, one to three snacks a day, including fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, legumes, nuts, and seeds in most of your meals, trying to limit your red and processed meats, be physically active, stay hydrated, and overall eat more plants. I did link a bunch of recipes for you guys to take a look at. You'll be getting this PowerPoint after today, um, but a really a bunch of good recipes that incorporate everything we've talked about today. My references I used for my information. So thank you all for letting me talk to you today. Um, I'm gonna be answering some questions now, but if you have any questions after today, feel free to always give me a call or an email. Okay, so let's see. All right. Thank you, Lindsay. Okay, so if you guys have any questions, you can go ahead and enter those into the chat or the Q&A. So, Lindsay, I thought it was very interesting that you broke down some of the chemicals because I've always heard things like microwaving plastics and, you know, things like that, but not necessarily some of the other chemicals. Yeah, the sodium nitrite. Yes. Yeah, so that, that one's really confusing because it gets real associated with nitrates a lot, which are used um, to like package a lot of meat. So that's kind of where that main cancer risk comes from. Okay. Um, so as you had mentioned, I will definitely send out the recipes. I'll send out the links in the email whenever I send out the link to this recording. And then um, I will also send out your PowerPoint so that people can review it again. Awesome. Okay. So I have someone that says that um, going through chemo is now and um, learning what to avoid is helpful, especially mm -hmm. with all the drugs change with the taste of food. That's a really good yeah. point because it can be really hard to eat. Mm -hmm whenever the foods taste different. Yeah, so nutrition changes while you're going through cancer treatment, whether that's chemo, radiation, all those other um, treatment methods. So there's, what I'm aware of, I always talk to your oncology dietitian because they're, they're the specialist. Um, so talk to your oncology dietitian, but to my knowledge, there's not a certain food that you should avoid while, avoid while going through treatment. Um, but your oncology dietitian will be able to help you with, um, just like recipes and techniques to make sure you don't have unintended weight loss and you're able to, um, get all the nutrition you need when it's just kind of hard when you're not hungry or having nausea, vomiting, poor appetite. Uh, but in terms of taste, um, typically we recommend doing more of like, um, really avoiding like really hot and cold foods because that can have a strong taste and strong odor and doing more of your bland foods. So don't season it a lot and kind of season it at the end because you can always add seasoning and not take it away. So um, more of your bland, soft foods, kind of avoid those extreme temperatures is one tip to kind of maybe give a go. Okay. So, oh, I like this one. This person's after my heart. They love turkey sandwiches. Yeah. So is the sliced turkey from the deli at the grocery store generally uh, free of nitrates? 
Good question. So I also love turkey sandwiches. Um, so it's completely fine to still eat turkey sandwiches. I would just say limit it to every once in a while. I wouldn't do them on a day-to-day -day basis, but yes, like even when you go to that deli counter, that's still considered processed deli meat that will have that sodium nitrite. So I've been curious about this is buying like the whole ham or the whole turkey breast and then slicing it off yourself into deli meat. Is that a better way? Um, so it all depends on how it's like processed, but, um, cause they're, they're like, when you go up to the deli counter, there's like, they're taking that whole ham or whole turkey and they're slicing it. So it depends like how it's processed. So if they're still processing the, like, the same way, then yes, they're what it, if they're, it's just like the way they're cutting it. Um, but like roasting your own ham and turkey yourself would not be as processed as it is in the store. Got it. Like your Thanksgiving turkey, like that doesn't fall into, like if you were to take your Thanksgiving turkey and make slices of turkey, that would be free of the sodium nitrate. Okay. But it depends if they did any processing to your turkey or beforehand. Got it. If that that makes, makes sense. sense. So okay. then if we like chicken sandwiches, we should buy a whole chicken, mm -hmm. cook it, and then just use yeah. that in our chicken sandwiches. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're doing that more on a day-to-day -day basis, do it, you know, you know, try to get like, um, some, yeah, doing like more of, um, the actual chicken, uh, or like doing like a chicken breast, you know, getting some chicken breast, kind of cutting that up. Um, or doing like chicken in a crock pot, shredding that up, using that for a sandwich. But it's still okay to have those things limit every once in a while. Um, yeah. All right. Do we have any more questions? I don't think so, Lindsay. Thank you. That was very enlightening. You are welcome. All right. So guys, be watching your email. I will be sending this out and let us know if you have any questions. So thank you, Lindsay. You're welcome. Bye. Bye.